Hey, yo. Spit on there. Today's uh, stick is a Viaje lemons, the lemonade. You got a punch. This thing's been kind of finicky lately. things for you. Hello, this is Mrs. Whitmore's sixth grade class. Uh, we are having a problem and need help. Please respond. Have
Sarah, just get on in there. weird usually they attack you on site basically
Work integrity looks good. I don't suppose I have time for a nap before we leave? Hmm? spend so much time looking at the scans, I can see star systems orbiting in my head. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Been poring over the charts, looking for another match. Think this one might just be it. Damn, 775 damage? Shit.
What was that assisted carry? Wow, holy crap. Twenty-one. And shine. We've got things to do.
I hate that at a certain point you have to keep going back to Vladimir to get the new temples. Man, this is a long fucking mission here. I'm sure they had something we can use.
What the hell? How the hell did that happen? Damn, Sarah, you don't even have your fucking suit on?
Sarah, why do you not have your suit on, dude? Don't leave any of that behind. UFC starts at 7.30. It's kind of late for a fight night.
Might as well take what we can. Got something for me? So long.
find anything useful? Excuse me. Hey.
Oh, thank God. I figured if I talked myself hoarse on the comms, the cavalry would come. I was expecting some free star militia, but any port in a storm, I guess. You and me both. Before spacers broke into the outpost, I was relaying orders for Lieutenant Torres. Torres ain't bad as far as COs go, but we'd have been flat out murdered if it weren't for the, and I can't believe I'm saying this, the UC Marines. So, and this is important. You see a Marine, don't shoot. They're friendlies. I never thought I'd live to see the day where the UC and the FC work hand in hand. Huh. Times really do change. We most certainly did. The whole situation isn't exactly standard operating procedure. After we clear the outpost, I'll talk your ear off about the whole situation. But right now, clock's ticking. Roger. So first things first, the makeshift infirmary isn't gonna hold. They set up on the ground floor in the security section. The whole place is on lockdown, so you'll have to find a way there. Talk to, um, uh, Lazama. He's the only thing between them and... Well, you get the picture. When Torres triggered the lockdown, I was with Lazama and the doctor in security, but the lockdown cut us off. Last I knew, Torres was fighting in the complex. Somewhere. The Marines were guarding the back entrance. No idea what's up with them, but that intel's old. Sorry, it's all I got. You are something else. Be safe, be bold. A dead soldier ain't no help to no one. If you're searching them, make it quick.
shot. It was nothing, guys. Set aside anything useful and just leave the rest.
Corporal Lizama. You see Marines, medic. We thought we were done for. I'm... I'm... Oh. And meet the esteemed doctor. Musa, right? It's his party we're crashing. We've lost too many good soldiers and scientists to the spacers. But everyone here is stable and will recover. Assuming we can clear the outpost of spacers. Mahoney's a machine. She's wasted on this rock. And this... Uh, what the heck are you guys doing here anyway? Doctor. Doctor! Yes. I mean... Yes. Astrobiology. We study non-Terran life forms in the settled systems. We uh, seek to understand the various flora and fauna and search for practical uses. Exactly. Any day, one of us can be the next Alexander Fleming. Life itself may hold the key to advancing the quality of our lives. Ah, it's nice to see your color back, Doctor. Listen, we can't waste time. The Free Star CEO, Lieutenant Torres, he locked down the complex. I'm not sure how long he can keep his troops safe. Last I saw Torres was on the third floor, near my office. Take this key and get to Torres. It should open everything except the security doors. Get to Torres before his men are wiped out. Good luck. This is it. What? You think he's a spacer? He's the one that cleared him out. Sarah, you gotta watch out running in front of me like that, girl. Well, I suppose they're not going to need it anymore. Looks like we're in the clear. We're not, Sarah.
I hope we find a use for that before it spoils. Look out! I don't stock up on junk.
Spaces. Too many of them. Are they all gone? Thanks to the stranger, every last one of them is down. Some fancy work there. How many more are there with your unit? You got sniper support or something? Holy shit. The mm -hmm. two of you did all of that. Huh. All in a day's work. We have to help Captain Myung. Sarah's not just a pretty door. face. But she's not Freestar, Lieutenant. Our first priority is our men and our scientists. She came in to save us, Sergeant, when no one else would. I will not leave her out to dry. We were hours from being overrun, and then Myung and her Marines landed. And they saved us. We were desperate, so we just welcomed them. Together, we've managed to hold the outpost. Why the captain came to our aid? Oh, you'd have to ask her. You sound so... certain. But the stranger's right. But, Lieutenant, they're the UC. We can't... Sergeant, I am ordering you to help us save those Marines. But how? We got a security override key. If the Marines are still alive, they'll be by the other entrance. We all work together. We should be able to save them. Or die trying. Damn right. They are soldiers that need us. Are you... up for it? We could really use your help. Good. Here's the security key. You take point. The captain's down one floor. Like I said, someone's been taking out the spacers. I... I don't believe it. Last much longer. Ah! 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 So glad you 
finally showed up. Could have used you before Dalton bought it. Stand down, Private. What matters is they're here now. And who the hell do we have here? Another scientist? Well, I'll be. Huh. You don't got the look of a Marine. Certainly not the militia. Who are you? What, the explorers? I didn't know you guys packed such a punch. Captain Myung, UC Marines. Veteran of the Colony Wars, the shield of Pardute Pass. Best damn Marine in the service. <laughs> and that loudmouth is Private Sai. If she wasn't such a hell of a soldier, she'd be polishing latrines for the next decade. You've saved lives here, and that is something I won't forget. Captain Myung. <laughs> You're a legend. I heard about you when I was working with the United Colonies. And you're here. My reputation precedes me, eh? I've always wanted to say that. I'm in the business of saving civilian lives. I figure this research outpost qualifies. If Mast found out, there could be a court-martial. The Captain and all her Marines. Oh, we'd all be dead if it weren't for them. You lot may be Freestar, but your ground pounders first. I wasn't about to let you all die ignobly to those rabid spacer bastards. War happened. Paduk Pass is a graveyard now. Lots of good soldiers, both sides, are buried there. Captain Myung held that pass for a week against the best mechs the Free Star could throw at us. When she pulled out, she blew up the whole damn pass. Took out a full mech battalion. Might have saved the entire nearer front. Don't believe the propaganda, Private. Paduk Pass was dirty business all around. Look around. Nobody here is my enemy. Torres and his men, they're just poor SOBs posted in the arse end of nowhere. Just like my Marines. We have more in common with each other than the damn politicians back home. You've got spirit. That's what we need right now. We've bought ourselves an old-fashioned stay of execution here, but it won't last long. The bastards are disorganized, undisciplined rabble. But they got spaceships and we don't. That means they can keep dropping reinforcements until they greatly outnumber us. Then the cowards will hit us. Hard. Your ship can't get everyone away, and there's nowhere to run they can't drop people on. I don't think the spaces will give us enough time to properly fortify, but we can entrench, establish the fire lanes. We can make them walk through a goddamn kill field. Which means they won't drop the reinforcements right on top of us anymore. But there's too many of them, and only one of you. No, we need a plan. I have a more immediate problem, Captain. I have troops and civilians in the field. If we don't act, the spaces could take them out. I can't abandon them. Damn it. What sort of leader would you be if you did? But we need every trained soldier to fortify and get the defenses back online. Mahoney said their last transmission indicated they were in trouble. If you could perhaps take your ship to the research camp and clear out any spaces. They went dark not too long ago, so hopefully they are still survivors. Just go quickly and safely. See if they've got any weapons or ammo. The research camp is all right. We haven't heard from them in hours.
Glad to know us Marines aren't the only ones crashing this party. Discuss with you. What can I help you with? Here, I have something for you. <laughs> oh, you're incorrigible. I picked it up on one of our latest planetary expeditions. I'm more than just an extra gun, you know. I do know. I'm just pleased I get to utilize some of my old field collecting skills. It's been a while. Check back with me from time to time after we return from our planetary jaunts. If I pick anything up, it's all yours. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy? Well... So it got me thinking, so I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. That's so cool. But I guess it only worked because they just lived on one planet. Uh, unfortunately, no. Other than you and Barrett, there were no records of direct encounters with the artifacts. I have to admit, though, I did get more than a bit sidetracked reminiscing about old times. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Arja just started flooding back. Aja Mamasa. She was the youngest member of Constellation when it was founded. Only took her 15 years to reach chair. Sorry, I sometimes get so caught up in my own bubble, I forget that I wasn't the first. Ah, oh, she absolutely was. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation and took me under her wing as her protege. Yeah, I thought so too. That's why I adopted her methods. You know, Aja and I logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. But it was the journey itself that I'll never forget. We catalogued unusual stellar phenomena, a few habitable worlds, and some unique life forms, but... Nothing SSNN would bother to report. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. Yeah, you know, being alone in interstellar space, nothing but light years of black around you. Some people find that terrifying. I find it comfortable. It helps me bond with my shipmates. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protégé and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I... miss her dearly. No, she retired. Living on Porima 2 now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit, and I could make proper introductions. A 
don't worry. There's no bad blood between us. The worst that might happen is you get stuck listening to two old friends catching up on old times. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, that's what intrigues me about you. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I... I, I, I have to go. Mm. <laughs> you have my attention. Back to the world, eh? Landing site locked. Take us in. <coughs> Pressure holding. Take us in.
find out. Valuable. Spacers are terrible. 
Corporal Mahoney radioed you were coming, but I didn't know if we could hold out. Not all of us made it. But you're a regular hero. Spacers dropped in some of their goons not too long ago. I managed to get most of us to the shelter. Anytime they approached the shelter, we managed to repulse them. But time wasn't in our favor. Then you showed up, thank God. Torres did that. He's so damn green. But all right. Mahoney said for us to go to grounds. There's a cave nearby we're going to hole up in until this is all over. Don't worry, I'll keep the civvy safe from here. There were too damn many of them. You saved us. This situation is getting out of control. From what I'm seeing, this world has all the essential building blocks to support life. Mahoney said the research camp is all clear. I... I don't know where we'd be without you. Most likely decomposing in some unmarked grave. Good on you both for making that mission of mercy a priority. Our job is to protect the civvies and never leave a soldier behind. Straight to business. Good. The Spacers haven't attacked yet, but they've been shuttling men down beyond the ridge. We cannot let them keep reinforcing, otherwise they'll overwhelm us. So we need to take out their ships. Ain't that the truth? But I'll take any one of the heroes here over a dozen of them. I concur with the captain. We can't hold out if we don't cut off the manpower. The Spacers have two fighter groups. If you take those out, the enemies will be stranded. So launch that fancy ship of yours and get to work. cash do I have? 66,000. Let me see.
Damn it. If you can't afford our ship quite, I think you'll be more. The best decision you've made. When you get serious about your spacecraft, come back to Daemon. Most ships are responsible for countless victories.
right, Captain. Where are we headed Leave next? Leave no one alive. I'll keep an eye out for hostile life forms.
That's something we can use. Scientists now it'll be here back are good to people. The depot. Every one of them that died is a loss for all of us. So many people. <clears throat> That's the price of command, Torres. Every decision leads to blood. You can drive yourself crazy with counterfactuals. Focus on the good you did. We did, here. Huh. Well... Just don't go saying that too loudly. Altair's safe because of you. Both of you. I almost want to write back to the Freestar and ask them to give you a medal. Now wouldn't that be the damnedest thing? I could put it on right next to my meritorious star. You'd save me a court-martial if you just give me your thanks. Might be you want your medal, though. Looks like we have ourselves an old-fashioned mercenary. I'm... I'm not sure if I would have done all this if the roles were reversed, Young. But I will never forget you. You're young, and you've got a future ahead of you. A bit of advice. I've been passed up for promotion more times than I can count because I've always stuck by my principles. There's a million ways the bastards in command will ask you to compromise. Little ways, big ways. Don't. It may hurt your career, but I look back with pride at my service. Especially today. You see? I sincerely hope I never see you across the lines on the battlefield, Captain. If you do, Lieutenant, I will do my duty. Not if I do my duty first. <laughs> Soldiers! It's time to get out of the Free Star's hair. To the restroom, I'll be right back.
let me get my uh, UFC stream started up. What happened to the University of Las Vegas? to add a 10th knockout to his ledger tonight. But his opponent is also on a scoring run towards his own title aspirations. A devastating striker who's eliminated opponents with any and all limbs. Oh, oh that's it. Huge knee for uh, El Guapo! El Guapo is looking for his sixth win in seven fights under the main event spotlight. But first, ESPN Plus serves up an action-packed plate of prelims. In the featured bout, a KG Chinese veteran of the sport looks to make it back-to-back -back impressive wins. Song Kanan has explosive power in his hands. And the assassin has built a career off getting his work done quickly. Professor who sh New tonight, we're learning more about the North Carolina connection for a professor who shot and killed three people at UNLV. Today, investigators said that Anthony Polito had 150 rounds of ammo and a gun when he was shot and killed by police. They say he was an assistant professor at East Carolina University and apparently had been denied a professorship at UNLV. And also new tonight, a former ECU student tells WCTI in New Bern that Polito appeared to have hold grudges. He would talk about you know, receiving the anonymous feedback and then trying to figure out who the student was that wrote the feedback. And he would talk about in his class, like, I know who he would read the review. He'd say, I know who wrote it. They sat right there. They were here two semesters ago. Hmm. Police say the three people that he killed yesterday were faculty members there. The fourth victim was a visiting professor who has life-threatening injuries. Investigators say that Polito sent letters with talcum powder to university workers all across the country and that he had a list of people he was, quote, seeking at ECU and UNLV.
lives of three people. We have three gunshot victims. <laughs> UNLV reeling from a campus shooting Wednesday that claimed the lives of three people. All faculty members, including 64-year-old Professor Jerry Chang and 39-year-old Assistant Professor Patricia Navarro-Velez. Another victim, a visiting professor, now recovering from a gunshot wound. Law enforcement released video of the moments before police shot the gunman, 67-year-old Anthony Polito. Officers from both UNLV and LVMPD arrived and heard shooting coming from inside the beam hall and went in immediately, and I stress without hesitation, to neutralize the threat. Police saying the gunman was shot multiple times just minutes after he began shooting on multiple floors of a UNLV campus building. Polito was armed with a Taurus 9mm handgun. He had brought 11 magazines to the scene with him. The gun, according to law enforcement, was legally purchased by Polito in 2022. He described himself online as a semi-retired university professor who taught in Georgia and North Carolina until 2017. <clears throat> he also taught classes at Roseman University. Hmm. It's an early Christmas offering of 11 bouts tonight, all with an inter... Where's Parima at? Greetings, oh, pilot. So this is Jiro Sugiyama, head of Paradiso Security. Thing. I apologize for coming over this emergency channel, but we are in need of assistance concerning the large ship in orbit, and we value yeah. discretion in Wanna this matter. Uh, sure. and able, please see me as soon as possible at the main security okay. office in Paradiso. Who can jump higher Far than out. a skyscraper in New Atlantis? Um, I don't... Okay, so you can't actually go... I have things for you. Something you need? 
I certainly do. It's all yours. Time to go? That's not a problem. And you're springing for the new reactor? It's still under manufacturer's warranty. Yes. Can I get an invoice? <laughs> what you need one of those for? Corporate policy. Is it okay? Here in Las Vegas for the penultimate UFC show of 2023. We have Hyen Amanda versus Talita Allen Carr Man, to ready? get us going. Man, are you ready? Fight! All set for a maximum three five-minute rounds of action. We've seen both of these ladies on the Contender Series. Laura, you were on the call for that. Both Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specialists turned to MMA. Yeah, this is absolutely a perfect debut matchup for both of these ladies. Incredible ground specialists. Both of them pretty small for this weight division. In fact, you know, Hayani Amanda, after uh, her fight on Contender Series, And Laura, you spoke about the size of Hyena Amanda. Now, Alan Carr has fought two, two opponents that are significantly bigger than what she yes. is in her last couple of fights. So it's uh, much more even Stevens for this one. She doesn't really feel the knockout threat coming back from Amanda. So let's see how she opens up. Oi. Oh, that's a nice right there from Amanda, though. In terms of Alan Carr's, you know, mindset of, of not really seeing much of a knockout threat from Hayani Amanda, that could really help her, you know, have the confidence to close the distance and, and look for those. I mean, these girls so freaking swinging. Her block knocked off, which, you know, when you fight it, you know, straw weight, atom weight, it really isn't something that is as big of a factor. You're looking to quite often these ladies in particular close the distance, clinch up, get the fight to the ground, and the real danger happens in the uh, submission game. Yeah, but they've got to get there, right? Yeah. We're going to see, it's going to come down to a lot of times we're seeing from these women who are maybe not a specialist in the striking department, more of a jiu-jitsu player. It's the striking. And, you know, you can't just throw these one. There's a good single leg attempt. Yep. She's got to stay on it, though. And she's got to stay busy in these scenarios, right? Up against the fence, in these clinch. This is where you want to use your strikes and your level changes. What I don't see enough of a lot of times when people are still working on stringing everything together is using your strikes to then set up the takedowns. This is where knees and elbows will come in handy. Mm. Well, and see, that was a knee. <laughs> and lands a knee. But now you've got to stay on the gas. You've got to stay forward. If you want that takedown, you've got to try to put more distractions out there. See, one big overhand. That's not enough. She's going to see that coming every time. Yeah, Amanda making it a good couple of chances there. Ooh, good right hand there. She caught the Shit. kick from Alan Carr. Or excuse me, from Amanda. Yes, making her opponent pay. Can't oh. get lazy, but that was a stinging looking right. That was These Alan girls Carr. are swinging. Yeah, nice shot by Alan Carr. I mean, that's that's an improvement, right? I mean, she had a very hard time getting the takedowns to stick on Dana Waits' contender series. She was actually four for 24, which is why by the third round she was so incredibly tired. Yes, I remember that. Really, yeah, she couldn't really do much on the ground once she finally got it there. But if she can string together some strikes, so she's eating them now, um, she's going to have an easier time getting those takedowns set up and actually getting the wrestling to work for her so she can go to the jujitsu. Oh, girls 
already got a mouse everybody coming up under her left eye. Oi! Right yeah, Hyani, a man of very aggressive here. And in her, oh, her last couple hurt. of fights, Paul, she really relied much more on her striking than she had in the past. I mean, the, when she won the belt in uh, another organization, it was off of her takedown defense and, and striking. So, oh, big right hand. Well, Amanda right now is doing a really good job of seeing Alan Carr's strikes coming because they are so one-shot oriented. Now she's countering beautifully. She's shown good footwork. And she's the one pressuring, even though she's circling around. Like, when they engage, she is landing the significantly harder shots. Alan Carr could do with using her jab a little bit or maybe some fainting because she's not setting up her strikes. You know, the, the strikes will, of course, set up the takedowns, but she needs to set up the strikes Absolutely. as well and, and move her head and, and, and start to get that jab going if she's going to close the distance on Amanda. Yeah, Amanda Connor done a good job of preparing her for this one. She was born into a family of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts. Her mum, her dad, who is actually a current coach, her brothers. I, think, I believe she got married in October. She did. As well to a, another Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Boy, oh. that was a good knee. Good counters again there from Amanda. She's worked very hard on her striking in the meantime. She's mixing it up too. She's going to the body nice and then going upstairs. It's getting a little wild now, but for good reason. Yeah. She's hurting her. Oh. The holidays on Dale's farm weren't very festive until he saved big on a Bluetooth speaker with Amazon's last minute deals. And now? Mamacita. ¿Dónde está Santa? That llama is part dancer, part prince. Shop last minute deals now at Amazon. And the toys that he will leave. Tomorrow, the UFC Fight Pass Invitational 5 comes your way with 10 huge matchups in the single best night of submission grappling ever. Yuri Samoyes versus Nikki Roy, Nikki Ryan versus Emily Jonatas Gracie, and more of Damn, Keith's voice. Members. Head to UFC Fight Pass on the socials for more on the matchups and streaming. Man, are you ready? From the UFC app. Man, are you ready? Odes coming your way from the fight capital as we close out the for 2023. What? Oh, shit. <laughs> This girl in black, nice. Alan Carr, well, is fucking swinging for the fences. She, her accuracy is trash. But like she's interested in, in having her come back up potentially when you well, think that uh, she'd yeah. want that top position. But she's she's doing so well on her feet. She's doing really well. She's landing. You can see both eyes for Alan Carr starting to swell up just a little bit. And she comes out. The first thing she throws in the opening of the second round is a big overhand right. Similar to what we were talking about, no setup, no yeah. feint behind it. What she's got to go back and work on, no matter what happens tonight, is using her punches to set up her wrestling, to disguise her takedown, so that she can use her jiu-jitsu in these fights. Amanda's been at MMA for 10 years, a little longer than her opponent tonight. She had a serious jaw injury a little while back, which threatened her MMA ambitions. Glad to see she got over that. And she can make this UFC debut in front of us tonight. Look at those live odds. They have changed dramatically from Amanda being a 155 favorite at its start. Yeah, Alan Carr just having a really hard time managing or, or, or gauging the distance, I should say. Her corner was calling for her to, you know, set up the shots with the jab, but then also she needs to jab out of the pocket as well, because so, when she is finding those moments to get closer to Amanda, she's not doing a good job of, of resetting and getting back out safely, and Amanda's landing those really strong counters. Yeah, and she's the longer fighter. She can land punches <laughs> at different angles and from a different distance. Alan Carr's got to get used to getting in tight to that pocket, being the shorter yep. fighter. Sometimes you just gotta bite down. You gotta and, go sometimes. Yep. I mean, this is the night to do it, right? In training, you work on it, you work on it. Then when you're under these lights and your feet are on that canvas, you gotta find a way to commit to going in. Really impressed by 
Kayani Amanda's movement out here too. I mean, her, her striking has grown tremendously even just since her contender series fight. And Paul, is there anything to be said about having a fight close to the holidays, Christmas time? They've, and if you I mean, don't come they're freaking dancing that week. Damn. Best, then you Damn. Sit down around the family table, if you will, while everyone's celebrating. Yeah, a bit blue. it sucks, right? You, you, you know, you train all this time, you sacrifice, and then you got to sit around and just be disappointed through a time where you're supposed to be able to celebrate. It's a lot on your mind, right? There's a lot of pressure, too, financially, too. You're like, oh, man, all right, with everything coming up, I'd love to go out there. Get a chunk and end of the year, just end yeah. the year with a big win. Especially Dude, these girls are freaking throwing, the man. Their accuracy is well, dog shit, but they're the throwing. Didn't really add up to what they wanted. Boy. For Amanda, at least she went on. She'd won a bunch of fights outside of the UFC, but both these women really want to get in here and show that they belong at the elite level. Alencar found her way to a double unders here. She's in a great spot. If she can look for an inside trip or some sort of hip toss, she's doing a good job with this head position, but so far it doesn't really look like she knows quite what to do to unbalance Amanda and, and get her down. And this is where I say those in close strikes. This is stuff you've got to be working on in the gym, whether it's with your pad holding you go. Oh, or damn, she finally took nice her down. One. Let's see if she can capitalize on this. This yep. is what she's got to try to do more often, right? Get to that clinch, get in tight, use that so when you are the more compact fighter, when you can get those underhooks, you can get to that lower back, you can get around the legs, you can start looking for those trips and things like that, you'll be much more successful. Yeah, she had a nice leg reap to get to this position here, but it's a matter of what will she do with it now, because this is something she struggled with a little bit on Contender Series, is just not doing enough damage when she finally did get these top positions. And is that, I guess, just going back to the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu route? Uh-oh, uh-oh, she, uh -oh, she integrate trying for a Kimura. I think old girl locked Absolutely. it up pretty good, I mean, though. She, oh, Amanda, that was creative. Yeah. It was very creative. Yeah. Looking potentially She's trying. for a Kimura grip here. She's got the arm of Hayani. Or no, Hayani Amanda, excuse me, is, is defending that by grabbing Oh, that fucking high. welt on the back of that girl's leg is nasty looking. looking for the mount, but good guard retention. Oi! Amanda. Stabbing heel kicks. <laughs> this is a really important moment here for Alvaro Laura, isn't it? To try and keep this in these kind of ranges. It is, and I mean, she's looking to do damage. I like that, you know, the heavy Good ground shot. in town. She said she was going to be mean in this fight, something that she felt like she didn't really show in the contender series. And that's exactly what she's doing right now. Yeah, she's ending this round extremely strong, throwing some big shots down here in her world, right? She can start to be more aggressive because where she feels most comfortable. Your fate is mine. The universe demands a god. The UFC welterweight title headlines the final UFC card of 2023. Reigning title holder Leon Edwards takes on former interim champ Colby ready? Covington, Fight. plus newly minted flyweight champ Alessandro Pantoja defends against torrid contender Brandon Roy Val. UFC 296 next Saturday, T-Mobile, Las Vegas. Purchase it now on ESPN Plus paper. I don't know if you saw it, Paul, but I thought Alan Carr looked a little tired oh. in her corner. Um, <laughs> when you can't drink the water because you're breathing too much, and you're dumping it out everywhere, that's that's usually a sign when a fighter is really fatigued. But can she overcome that, right? Fist fighting's tiring. It's very hard to control your heart rate in the short amount of time you have in between rounds. But you need to learn how to push through that. That is the things you need to be doing in training. You need to learn how to work through that state. It's a 15 minute fight, Oy. you know that. You've gotta be able to go to full gas for 15 minutes yep. 
in MMA. It's just, if you want to be among the best, that is something that you have to learn to fight through, is your heart rate popping out of your chest and still maintain calmness and still maintain a clear head on your shoulder. And Paul, only five professional MMA contests for yeah. Alan Carr. And it shows in those in, the, in those moments, right, where you're still gassing out, you're still getting tired at the end of these fights, you're having trouble implementing your game plan, still young in her career. Yeah. Amanda on the other side, 21st pro contest tonight. And you can see just in the physicality mm -hmm. of these mm -hmm. two fighters that who's the more experienced. Oh. If you didn't know oh. records at home, you could probably tell. Now, here's another opportunity. But again, oh, uh, God, damn that girl just, just swung, son. Missed that right hand. Amanda's kind of imploring her to go forward. Yeah, it, um, Amanda does need to pick up the pace. She started to also slow down. Now, does she look as fatigued? As I think Alan Amanda won the first but round. Alan Carr won the, the second. Since the begin, like the, what, midway through the second round, she really just has dipped off a bit. I think both of these ladies could, could use with a few more jabs. Hey, yo. What's up, man? And for for Amanda, Amanda, I mean, to show some some knees, anything that's going to discourage uh Alan Carr from shooting. From, from shooting, especially now that she's you know fatigued and might be taking a little bit more of a sloppy shot than she was early in the fight. We doing, man? How's it going? She's just she's got to throw. She's got to land some shots because the end Oy. of the second round. Now, it, it you was watching or no? Alan Carr at least ended. With the, I think last minute, minute and a half sure. on top, landing some big shots. That's the last thing that's going to be in the judges' minds going going in to the third round. You can see the damage that. Amanda has inflicted. Alan Carr certainly wearing it. But that's all first round, correct? I mean, that was all from the, yeah, the striking in the first round. She looked great. But she really has. That's to not all from the mind. first round. Right. God that damn! <laughs> She's trying to take her head off. Yeah, she old girl looked like she was swinging a baseball bat. <laughs> she did. Really oh, that was a head collision, I think. These, it's almost like scored as three fights, right? Yeah. yeah. The cards are posted at the end of each round. And that wasn't a 10-8, right? It was a no, clear 10-9 round. Yeah. Sure. And then the second, well, if Alan Carr got a 10-9, we don't know. I mean, it could have been Amanda's round too, but she didn't She didn't really tie a ton of pressure in that second round. And at least now she's moving Dang it, man. She's throwing, you know. Smoking Alan, what, you know, man? Maybe not the sharpest strikes right Already, now, but she's uh, busy. I'd love to see more kicks. Polish me a cigar well. off today. I know a lot of times you can, oh, there we go. Uh, there go. Yeah. I think the main is um, Song Yadong. Hold on a second, I'll pull it up. Tucking her chin. Yeah, neither of them really utilizing the kicks too much. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you there, John. Give me just a second here. High energy throwing from Amanda. Well, I, I, I feel like I say this every time I call fights, but it just, every time I see something like this, it reminds me, missing is so exhausting as well. I mean, and it's not something that ever, that you necessarily practice. When you hit pads, That's the main you have these set combinations that you don't often Song Yadong and Gutierrez, Anthony so Smith, Khalil Roundtree, swinging and hitting the air, Pat Karast and, and Malarkey, Tim Elliott. And the prelims, which is what we're on now. We're on this. Uh, that's not who's fighting, is it? Back fist landed for Amanda. Oh, but that's a bigger right hand there. Excuse me, Alan Carr. Bigger right hand from Amanda. Getting my A's mixed up tonight. I know, yeah. Fast and Furious. Yeah. The When's the last time you've seen T uh, Tim fight? This one will see Damn, they, they were freaking going for it at the end. Decision. I don't know how to uh, score this one, man. I thought this was going to be in a... Uh, I thought this was gonna be like an Asian card because there's a lot of uh, Asian fighters on it, but they're in uh, Vegas. Why'd you have to quit tobacco, man? Like health issues or you just, it was like making you feel bad or what?
I was about to say, I don't think it's been as long as I was thinking it was. Later tonight on ESPN Plus, 26-year-old Chinese sensation Song Yudong brings serious knockout power to the cage against high-level striker Chris Gutierrez. Plus, Anthony Smith versus Khalil Roundtree in the co-main. Main card is right here on ESPN Plus. All right, back now in the apex. Time to get the official decision. Here's Joe. I think uh, old girl thinks she won. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to She's the dancing scorecard. and shit. Here are the totals. Judge Bird scores at 29-28. Alan Carr. D'Amato, 29-28. Amanda. And McCarthy oh, has it, a 29-28 for your winner. By split decision. Amanda. The problem child. Talita. Damn. Alan Carr. Damn, she pulled it out. Okay, so a split. I don't know. It was kind of a. Alan Carr. Either way for me. About that, folks? Uh, I will confess to being a little bit surprised by that one. Again, when I'm calling these fights, I'm not judging them as I Damn. call them. Damn. Just off the top of my head, I felt like uh, Hayani Amanda did more man. damage and, and was more overall effective. I don't know about you, Paul. I, I mean, I, I think that. So Amanda was the tobacco like actually did it play a play a part in it or at the end of that fight i think she was in control the whole first because i had uh i, I don't necessarily agree with the decision i had pancreatitis back in the day like put me in the hospital for a, a week it was close but it was close and the doctors were like well how much do you drink and i was like what do you mean they're like alcohol how much do you drink and i said i uh don't like maybe a, two beers a year like i barely ever you know consume alcohol and they're like, you know, we need you, to, we, we need you to tell me, tell us the truth. And I'm like, I don't, I don't drink alcohol. Like I might have two beers a year. And they were like, oh, well, what do you do? And I was like, I smoke cigars. And they were like, oh, it must be the cigars. And I'm like, y'all are full of shit, man. So I stopped smoking cigars for about a year, year and a half, and then picked them back up and haven't had a problem since. What ended up giving me pancreatitis was uh, I ate a, a lot of eggs, and eggs are really fatty. And that ended up being what it was, was the eggs. Uh, the eggs, the fat and the eggs fucked up my gallbladder, and that caused me to have pancreatitis. It was a fucking whole thing, but... All right. Well, all that. If I just write it on a notepad. As long as it's written and signed, it could be on a loaf of bread. Damn. Not anything you need to offload. Trade authority is always by. Kiosk right here for you. I wish all the bots worked like Aquila City. It's pretty dangerous out in space these days. Oh yeah. I don't know, man. I've never, I've never smoked weed. Thank goodness we have our jetpacks to offset this. Damn, not the new ports. Them things are uh, pretty strong, aren't they? Hey, what can I do for you? Even the Rangers are getting impressed with Sam has told me so many stories about a kid. <laughs> I feel as though I've lived here all my life. What did I get forty five hundred dollars for? I mean, I'm not complaining, but I don't. I used to get them on my uh, first playthrough also, and I I never knew where it came from. Are you breathing, back to normal yet? Mostly. Still feels a little weird though. I guess I'm not used to having the tube out. You're probably looking for Mary. I'm not looking for anything. I'm looking for shit to steal. Guess that means you won't be telling the marshal that I'm. How did that add a bounty? Just waiting around. Hold her right there. Damn. You're in all kinds of trouble. Why do I always get FC security? No way! I am not going to help you murder these people. Mostly. 
here, though. Calm down, Sarah. The tube out. But it's nothing that would keep me from getting back out there. You need to give it more time, Helga. Guess that means you won't be telling the Marshal that I'm approved for field duty. Not yet. There could still be a setback, hmm. and I need to be close at hand if that happens. Fine, fine. Started smoking you weed at 13? In here. You just take it or easy. Or cigarettes. Shouldn't be long now. Late one night, Annie Seems Wilcox tried to arrest me for That's public and pretty crazy. Even by Sean be a terror Hanks. when she grows up. Nobody ever accused those boys of having an old. She was really the heart sense. of the Free Star Collective. Yeah, the truth. Damn it, man! I have never. Uh, my first encounter with marijuana was uh, I was working at a jail. I was doing corrections and I strip searched a guy and made him squat and cough and it fell out of his ass. Don't be causing trouble now. I've heard that a lot. Weed, uh, weed and jujitsu go together pretty well, apparently. You got some business with me? You never know who you'll meet. That kind of turns you off of marijuana, though, when you see it fall out of somebody's ass. Well, if the marshal sent you to me, that means he's looking to recruit you. Just so you know what you're getting into, I'll explain who we are and what we do. Well, the Free Star Rangers ensure the safety and security of the Free Star Collective and its people. We might hunt down a fugitive, break up a smuggling operation, investigate a starship theft, or put some would-be bank robbers behind bars. Whatever needs doing to keep the people safe. We didn't put them behind bars. We fucking murdered them, so. Yeah, I, you know, I've never, like I said, I've never done it, but I've also never bought into the fact, like Joe Rogan, I used to listen to um, the Joe Rogan experience a lot, and him saying that, like, you can't, you can't smoke too much weed and die from it. Like nobody's ever died from it and stuff like that. Like, I don't know, man. He's uh. Sure, but we rangers work I think across he's kind the of whole of freestyle wild for saying space. something like that. Like I'm sure there's been times where people have um, had issues from smoking too much. Like most things that are worth doing, it ain't always easy. But. Do I think we make the Free Star Collective a little safer for everyone? Yeah, I do. I imagine you've got some questions. I'll answer anything I can. Done your homework, huh? Good. That'll save us both some time. A word about myself. I'm in charge of making sure anyone that wants to be a Free Star Ranger is up to the task. That I don't know, man. Said, That's crazy. The marshal wouldn't send you here if he didn't think you had potential. So, what's it gonna be? Are you ready to sign up with the Free Star Rangers? Yeah, I've I've heard also that it's a trigger for uh, schizophrenia a lot of times too. Like if people have, you know, that kind of schizophrenic thing in them that like smoking weed can be like a switch to kick that shit over the edge. It's a dangerous job, but an important one. As long as you leave room for your commitments to Constellation, we won't have any problems. Before I hand you a badge, I need to know you can handle the job. You helped out with the hostage situation, but sometimes people just get lucky. Tell you what, use the mission terminal and take one of the listed jobs. Your choice. Come back alive, and we'll talk about you joining up. Then I suggest you get going. I should have said, can we oh, skip the evaluation? Time my... Oh, 
Oh yeah, see I don't know that I don't know enough about it. does have a very good calf kick too that he utilizes and I think that's going to be his game right stay on the outside use his long strikes try to force Hernandez in in this way it, it, it works twofold for him he gets him to force him in close and it can also work for him to getting his own takedowns oh yeah so fast see I haven't I haven't listened to him in um, probably about six eight months maybe like, I, I pick up a couple of them that um, are people that I want to, like, when he has a guest that I want to, that I want to watch, but I don't, I don't listen, I used to listen to every episode, like, in order, but now it's, like, if Duncan Trussell's on there, I'll, I'll watch that one, I like his, uh, when he does the protect our parks. Yeah, I was going to say, that was impressive by Carlos Hernandez because Tatsuro Tire almost had the back there momentarily, and he was so wise to it, to spawn right back in. Hernandez working with Mike Valley, Valley Flow, Bahamundes. I don't know either one of these guys. Tayara versus Hernandez. Yeah, those guys can strike, but they can wrestle too. They can do it all. I mean, they're really, they're really working on making their games well-rounded, especially with Bilal kind of there their leader over there he's a guy that has shown he can fight he can wrestle he can keep it on the outside he can fight with his boxing tyra oh sorry no, 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 go ahead. i was gonna say tyra looking to jack up this underhook um, on his left side looking to possibly wizard kick here but carlos hernandez doing a really good job of pressuring him into the fence it makes it really difficult to dig for those yeah like i uh i mean i'm not opposed to it but it just Shoulder pressure I mean, I drink, I drink more now than two beers a year, but still, it's probably easily less than a 30-pack a year. Like, it, it's it's not – most of the time, I'll smoke um, – I'll drink a, a sour beer with a cigar. Like, that's usually what it is. I, I don't ever just go grab a beer and sit down with it. I'll use it as, like, a – I'll pair it with a cigar. Yeah, see, I'm I'm a big pussy when it comes to uh, liquor and any anything strong. Like I can't do it. They're always so tricky to get down like that. Yep, especially off the fence. They just find a way to find their foot on the ground and then reverse positions. I tried to get into um, the IPAs, you know, like from different uh, from different companies, like you know, making their different IPAs, dude. IPAs taste like dog shit. Like them things are disgusting. Like I would find one that was like, you know, it's grapefruit, you know, flavored and this and that and all, and it all just tastes like ass. To isolate that arm a little bit. I'm watching this transition here closely. Look how he's got the legs of Carlos Hernandez wrapped up. I mean, he's always just yeah. See, so I've tried. I've tried. Um. So many options, though. Liquor, maybe twice, three times. So going back to Joe Rogan, uh, you know, he talks about Buffalo Trace a lot. So I went and bought a bottle of Buffalo Trace, wanting to be a man. And uh, I couldn't even fucking drink the shit like. I, it's just not for me, man. I'm not. Again, I'm not against it. It's just uh, it. Heavy, heavy hits on the small of the back of I'm not trying to get drunk, and if it doesn't taste good, I'm not going to drink it. Like you know, it kind of. If I'm not trying to get drunk and it doesn't taste well, what's what's the point in me drinking it? Yeah, and we've seen Hernandez with his sub loss. This dude's about. I don't know. He's got a minute. A spot that he has had trouble against high level grapplers before. The angle is a little bit. He's got a body triangle on him, and he. Hip to that it, is already looking he's to on his back to something else here. From the fighting tyrant boys, he just eats up the clock, doesn't he? These ground exchanges, and, and not only eats up the clock, John, but just wears on yeah. you, right? This is exhausting for anybody at home that doesn't have any grappling experience trying to buck out of these positions yeah. and fight somebody that's so yeah. I've never even, position, look, right to a body I've never even thought about back. trying it. He hasn't taken a single strike either. He's like a little mini Gileton Almeida out there. It's crazy. I was drunk one time, and I fucking hated it, man. One time, and I hated it. Absolutely hated it. 
Like, my brain was still functioning perfectly fine, but, like, I, I couldn't, like, get my motor skills. It's like my brain was disconnected from my parts of my body. I could not stand it. It was horrible. That's why I've only been drunk one time. Oi! Yeah, they say, uh, what's his face? Joe talks about ayahuasca, too. That's basically the same sort of deal, right? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. And it was, uh, we were playing beer pong with, um, oh, just thinking about it makes me want to throw up. We were playing beer pong with Jaeger and, uh, Bud Light Lime. It was horrible. Daily White's 12 days of giveaways, sweepstakes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my friend group growing up uh, started drinking underage, which, I mean, they were doing it at their house, and their parents, you know, allowed them to do it, so, but I didn't, I didn't care for it. I was, uh, I was just thinking that I might just edit that myself. There's Tyra going to these calf kicks, but Hernandez, he checked he's that got a chance here. He's got great boxing. He made a mistake in the first round. He paid severely for it, but he did survive it. Now he's got to he's got to try to do something to get the respect back from Tyra and hurt him. And Laura, he's oh, oh my goodness! Oh, oh it buzzed him! Oh, oh! It hurts. Big shot to Tyra. The window's still yeah, he's, closed on Hernandez. Yeah, yeah. He's got to scramble. He's not even covering up well. Yep, yeah, that's it. Damn it, man. It is not one good one threat, a double threat, triple threat. Oi. That eye looked nasty. Yeah, Tatsuro Tyra, not just a grappler. He showed tonight. I mean, he's got the hands as well. This man is a factor in this division. Wow. 100%. Let's see if it shows us replay. Now with a knockout on his record. Let's take a look here. Look at this right hand. Boom. Right down the middle. Staggers Hernandez, follows up with a beautiful combination, and then on the ground. I love that he ended up finding a way to get the TKO. Look at that. Needs a left hook for it, but just landed the bigger, powerful shot, showing off his speed, gets in there, and just is relentless on getting Hernandez, who tried his absolute best to survive, but just Tyra too much. Dang it, man. Impressive showing from Tatsuro Tyra. Dang the man throwing out the biddies. A rankings pairing. Surely that I appreciate it, man. In we'll be back to make this one official. I gotta be uh, mindful of how much I put the the uh, the UFC up. I got in trouble last time. <laughs> not in trouble, like uh, not like they threatened to you know cut my stream or something. But they, I got an email about it. So, oh shit, my bad. Dang it, man. 
Yeah, I was saying, uh, I, like, I didn't get in trouble for, um, for throwing the uh, UFC up, but it they sent, an, I got an email from uh, YouTube and was like, eh. Time to move on. I appreciate the bits, man. Doing ads again? Don't let get away. Did that cut the ads? Oh, he's... I'm shooting this dude. He's over here fighting the fucking birds. Did it put ads up again?
Damn, dude. It hit. A, it put another ad up. I hit snooze ads. Oh yeah, no, it doesn't work. Yeah. Actually, I think it makes it worse. To be honest with you. If this laboratory is run by the military, they're not going to let us tour the place without an escort. What's MFS? Oh, MFS gave me, wow. Damn it, man. It should only be a minute and a half um, each time you get ads, but it shouldn't, I think I have it set the uh, five, five, five an hour so you should only get them like every 20 minutes or so i don't know i'm still kind of uh kind of new to the whole thing I've, I've only been affiliate for maybe a month month and a half somewhere in there I don't think I ever came here in my first playthrough. I think I would have remembered this place. The shitty part too is it doesn't tell me when it's uh, throwing out the ads. I hope the research staff at this facility knows what they're doing. There's still gunshots going off. Well, I suppose they're not going to need it anymore. What's the point of this? Yeah, um, you told me about it the other day, didn't you? I think that was the day it came out. Are you? Yeah, or you told me it was co it was coming out in the next couple of days, and I saw it just after that because it leaked early yeah yeah because without you telling me about it i had heard nothing about it dang that luana santos uh be looking all right started doing it because um when i was playing tarkov like a lot of people stream tarkov that way when you kill somebody and they get pissed off they can tell that you weren't cheating and then it just turned into you know once once i started getting a little bit of a following which i don't i still don't really think i have that big of a following but um 
Once I figured out that you could make money from it. Oh, shit. How the hell did I not see him or know he was even there? But once I, uh, I'm like, shit, if I can do it and get a little bit of money for doing it, you know? All right. Let's see. The fight is on. And she got a lot of training in with Macy Barber. They were really going at it, and she held her own, you know, against a woman with that much experience, which speaks a lot to the skills, uh, you know, that she has and the ceiling that she has, I guess. Yeah, that'd be a great training partner for her, for sure. And like you said, so much experience. Have seen it all inside of the Octagon thus far. She just Santos looks, looks heavy. Yeah, I think she's fighting Caitlin Chukadian. And yes, that's right. I saw that. Paul, we were actually talking yesterday about the striking of Santos. I was watching some tape on her in the in the room at Team Alpha Male. Looks a lot more disciplined and technical. But yeah. She had this like clubbing right hand that she actually finished the fight with in her debut. But it was untidy but effective. Yeah. Sometimes you got to improvise, right? When you're Stephanie Eggers, you old as shit, ain't like she? Maybe not. You know. It, a standard way to throw that too. Even ugly stuff works. It works. I mean, and, and if it works, it's right. It works, especially <laughs> in the moment, in the moment yeah. because it, it's not right. We're trained so often to see things a certain way. She grabbing the glove. Oh, did that mm -hmm. be a, uh, an equipment uh, issue? Yeah, Stephanie oh, Eggers, 35. Oh, Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. Also pause the action and not right, throw a strike in that. That's moment. not common for women, for female fighters. Usually they don't go that long. Stuff between the ladies, they get straight back to it. Santos isn't shy on her kicking game. No, as she's been a sidekick. Eggers on the back foot, which she's not used to in her UFC career. She likes yep. to come forward. She'll walk through traffic to go where she wants to go as well. And, and she's having a trans woman fighter wear. With these, with these sort of sidekicks and, and kicks in general that Santos is throwing out there. They've clearly game planned that. Power slap, road to the title season Not two. in the UFC. In, catch a new episode. Or I wouldn't think so, at least. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific to see the next wave of slap fighters earn a chance at a power slap title. For more info, head to powerslap.com right now. Well, not now, because you want to watch this fight. <laughs> no, I, don't, I wouldn't Maybe, think it would be UFC. I don't think Uncle Dana would go for that. She bought it there, but didn't quite have it. Let's see. I had to brush up on my judo terms and anticipate. Oh, yeah? No, I was, I was a, a green belt judo back in the day, so. Oh, look at you. That's better Just than me. Off. No, thank Just you. Off. <laughs> Let's go Harai Goshi for Ogoshi go. later, shall we? <laughs> yeah, the terminology is where I uh, struggle. Just put Oshi on the other Is it and Fallon and Fox so by hard. any chance? You just have to take tests, honestly, and I, yeah. I did terribly in that. Yeah, I, I normally my... say Oshi just about to uh, enter the map when I see Paul. If it is, that person's six and one. <laughs> Or five and one, rather. Head positioning. She's got uh, the underhook on one. Now she's got double unders. We'll see if she can utilize that into some sort of throw. But that's where the, the judo sort of might cancel each other out. They're both so wise to the momentum shifts that are so important to get Don't those throws that. into We want to see it I want to see it, too, see it play no. out. I want to see who gets to scarf hold first because both it's of these players ladies, like it. Right? it yeah. Yeah. You've got two high-level judo players like this. Kazakh Tommy, if you get a big win. throw, they should almost have an agreement. It's like, in, like in judo, if you land a full point, like if you land an actual proper it throw, yeah. it's it. it Let's oh, do this. Rap. I've been hip on before. Oh, yeah. About seven years old, cry my eyes out good. somewhere in Middle England. <laughs> I like how Edgar is actually using the uh, the double overs sort of against her because she was pinching them close to her and not allowing uh, Santos to, hmm. to use them very effectively. That's smart grappling and smart clinch work. Both of these ladies obviously in, encouraged and inspired by the journey of Ronda Rousey. The path that she laid, of course, from judo all the way through to UFC gold. Last 40 seconds in our opening round. Good pressure. Yeah, I mean, it, I think in turn a lot of. I don't think it's fair if they, you know, fight, especially. And I maybe I'm controversial in my thoughts that if it's a woman to a man transgender, then, I mean, hey, have at it. You think you can do it? Go for it. But if it's male, if it's male to female, it's not fair at all, man. Yeah, it changes everything. It's all about the gi. It's all about the grips to use those throws and to force momentum. 
What's the movement called? Kazushi? If it's female to male and they want to fight men, I mean, hey, more power to you. I don't think it's going to work out well for you, but. <laughs> Short notice, same thing. Damn, I was like four minutes behind. How the hell that happened? You know until it plays out, or unless you are part of the athletes' camp, you might have an idea of it. Bro, if there was a a female to male transgender that made it to fighting John Jones, like <laughs> that would be pretty fucking savage, man. Boy, one zero to Santos with the judo, bragging rights straight into side control. I believe Edgar may have collected the legs, however, looking to go straight to the back. Uh oh, damn, yeah, she didn't pushes. get her hooks in, so old girl stood back up. Uh oh, somebody's bleeding. Little blood may be from Santos. Forehead cut. We'll take a look at that when we have a better for the view. Lacing the leg is Santos. Uh oh. To drag Egger down. Yeah, I'm upset that John Jones uh, Stipe fight got cancelled or got postponed. That's a pisser. I think we talked about that last time too. That would be fancy. Well, I think they're both just so aware of hip positioning in the, in this fence work exchange that that they're kind of like they can read each other's yes. there's a lot going on i guess is what i'm trying to say in these exchanges where it doesn't look like much is happening they're Same both in making, a high level jiu -jitsu it is right? there's both they're both making reads and adjustments that are so small that you know we can't necessarily even see all of them She's pretty good that right by long. Santos, yeah, it's just to get that front guard out of the way. Keep herself safe from the knees and elbows. And this is where the, you know, the traditional wrestling, the, the more folk style stuff could come in handy because while they're both thinking hip tosses, you can drop down and look for a single or a double, you're gonna have the element of surprise uh, in this particular situation, but it looks like they're both trying to look for trips and uh, throws for the most part. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I used to hate John Jones. Um, I think we talked about that last time too. Like I like DC and Stipe. And when jo when Jones was going through all of that, uh, all the the pictograms and all of that stuff is it, sickening. The end there, it was the power but I like him now. I think all I think his whole persona is horse shit where he's like tries to be the nice guy and all of that stuff. I look straight through that shit because I mean Oh yeah, big firepower coming back from Switzerland with Egger. Switzerland known for its firepower. She's not, she's not neutral not tonight. Going there. I grimaced as I said that. What did I say that for? <laughs> <laughs> Last few seconds in this second round. Get the gift you want this Yeah, hey, your boy is wild, man. Get a new iPhone 12 with 5G for 99.99 and no activation fees when you switch. You'll get a dual camera system to capture holiday memories and blazing fast 5G for downloading videos and games. Metro's got the lowest price in prepaid and not a yada yada, which means no contracts, no credit checks, and no surprises. Get holidays without the gotcha, only at Metro. <laughs> I got somebody wanting me to 3D print them a uh, pyramid for Guys, Tuesday, their it's a kid. New of UFC Roundup. Join myself and Michael Chiesa for our takes on tonight's card. Plus, I don't know. Connor don't even look the same as he used to look, man. Like, 
next week on YouTube. I can't. I, I think, you know, as much as I like Connor, I do think your boy was hitting the sauce. Let's like, tune in, let's keep this his thing fucking going. head, right. like, grew. I love watching it. You guys Connor, right? Yeah, I'm really enjoying Thanks, it. Laura. You're a man. <laughs> that read was, was pretty good. It was, I mean, Paul is You just got the Hollywood voice, though. Yeah. So I got the acting chops. I yeah. may have booked a movie coming up soon. No big deal. Some big things English involved. Over here. He can read with the best of them. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. Right, That's her head. Two. right into Scar. She's on as well. She's going to be looking for this key lock. The way that she sets it up is she's got that arm there, the, the left arm of Egger. She's going to look to isolate it between her legs and elevate the elbow. But you know, Egger she's seems to be high, wise with it. Yeah, she is very high. This is not a well balanced Kesekatami position at all because Egger knows exactly what she's looking for. She's going to try to take the back, which is always the, the danger of that scarf position. Yeah, she's safe from that arm lock now. Yep. Nicely done by Egger. She's not safe yet Oops. in that dog fight position. Good job from Egger. Yeah, that was very, very good by Egger. They clearly drilled that and they knew the dangers. That's such a common spot to end up in in judo as well. I mean, that's something that she's been doing for years. But And it's why you don't see it often in MMA, because it is so easy to have your back taken if you yeah. don't know exactly what you're doing. You have to have one heck of a case of Tommy to be able to hold somebody there. Or you got to be Josh Barnett. Right yeah, do, I, I, I can remember even going with good, like my yeah. sensei at the time. They would just crush you in that position if you really know how to, especially you're good at with it, the it's awful. Yeah. It is oh. awful. Eric Paulson recently yes. did a uh, seminar at our place back in the UK. Sorry, man. I'm oh boy. He loves his guys. He's got so all good. kinds of options from there. That man just loves pain yeah. in general. The nasty stuff. Yeah, he, I mean, it, dude, it changed the way he freaking looked, like, big time. Maybe frame off. You know, it kind of seems like she's a bit stuck here. Neither of them is really accumulating yeah, any points. Yeah, strike here. Yeah. And we, we talked about it a little bit throughout this fight that the, the wrestling is kind of lacking here. Let's see them try to level change. I know they're both, you know, high-level judo players, judo black belts, but this is mixed martial arts. If the judo is not working, yeah. and you lose this position because of that. Well, that's interesting because Santos's corner wanted her to stay in that position. Hey! She needs to be more active, though. She yeah, won't be exactly. afforded many I've been thinking about it. You have to be landing I, uh, hard shots. They're hard knees. Elbows right? inside. Exactly. I got a fucking because box of um, PLA Plus sitting that's over here shot. thinking about it. Now you've got Edgar landing big shots and really sort of... I have a... Um, you can clock, see it right the there, the, like, the okay, Bamboo Lab uh, X1 yeah. Carbon. But she you can see Santos is struggling. Yeah. She has the more UFC experience. This is her seventh appearance here for the MMA leader. Wound that right hand up. Santos looking very labored at this point, but she's back in sort of this safe spot she likes so much where she can just sort of push Egger into the fence. But again, she's got to I recently upgraded my computer. Really nicely driving that elbow into her face. Yeah, and it's, it's oh, yeah, that's ridiculous. Egger's had this fight booked for a long time now, whereas Santos... I upgraded my computer. I put a new um, processor and RAM and motherboard and all of that stuff, and I haven't uh, reset up just any of the stuff. Let me. I think Edgar, to some degree, is sort of, you know, looking at how her, you know, open up this. All right. Because I don't see her fighting for a position too hard. I think she's waiting for. Let me for see her if I can back out in the center where get this shit set up. Come on. Come on. This is an opportunity here for Egger. Will she take it and capitalize? Last 40 seconds. Yeah, I have a four I have a 4090. Now she has that clinch. I got the um I went from an I9 9900K to an I9 14900K. She's got to be landing shots, though. And that's it. 
Three rounds in the books. It goes to the judges' scorecards. Damn it, man. A war cry from Luana Santos. We'll see who has this one in the bag when we come back. That was kind of a shitty fight. What is that? Oh, the Sun Lu. The UFC Welterweight title headlines the UFC final card of 2023. Reigning title holder Edwards takes on former interim champ Covington plus newly minted flyweight champ Pantoja defends against Tommy contender Roy Val, UFC 296. Next Saturday from T Mobile Arena right here in LV. You can purchase it now on ESPN Plus pay per view. Let's get it inside to Joe, who has the official reckoning. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards. The judges see it 30 27, 29 28, and 29 28. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Luana Santos! Congratulations to Luana Santos. Perfect in the octagon 2 0. Uh oh, my fiance is calling me. Hold on, just a for this one here at the apex let's see where our ambitions lie in 2024 we believe it's the flyweights exciting times ahead later tonight on espn plus 26 year old chinese sensation song yudong brings serious knockout power to the cage against high level striker chris gutierrez plus anthony smith is in town versus khalil roundtree in the co-main event the main card is right here on espn plus Three fights down, three more to come before we open the main card here at the Apex. A week later and up a weight class, Steve Garcia and Mazikiel Costa finally get their chance to throw hands in the octagon. And fans expect the results of this lightweight bout to be one to remember. A summer injury forced Steve Garcia to sit out an August bout, but tonight Albuquerque's Mean Machine returns in search of his third consecutive victory. And after knocking out Chase Hooper and Shailan Nordan Becker, he'll undoubtedly be throwing hammers when he faces Neil Kuzael Costa. Brazil's Costa has made quite the impression since debuting in the UFC in January. And after a pair of entertaining outings against Geldo Moises and Austin Lingo, he can close out 2023 with a second straight win if he can get by Garcia. Coming up next, Steve Mean Machine Garcia squares off against Neil Kizael, Melky Costa. Brazil's Mikizael Costa making the walk to the UFC octagon. And man, Paul, last time out against Austin Lingo, he had a tremendous fight. That was a huge step up from his UFC debut against Thiago Moises. Struggled a little bit against him, but against Austin Lingo, looked so good. I think one of the judges even had it 30-26. Just a real show-in for him and showed what he is capable of doing on the feet. Uh, I think they're reacting to the unique walkout music.
forcing him to be pulled out. Is excited about getting that winning sensation tonight here, though. He most definitely is, and you know, you just mentioned it. He was he felt terribly ill, either food poison or a stomach virus, and during the weight cut, he vomited uncontrollably. It got to the point of dehydration after a trip to the hospital, and what was going to be a 10-hour wait, he returned to the hotel to try to sleep it off, woke up throwing up again, and was not well enough to compete. He was incredibly apologetic. Look, he said, this is the way I make my money. I wanted to be in there. Of course, he got the call to do it this week, and it's important to him. He said he has a three-year-old son, a 10-year-old stepdaughter at home with severe, severe autism. This is how he provides the space at home and the medical care she needs. It's a battle in and out of the cage for Steve and his family, but he's proof that he is not the underdog any longer, and he's ready to silence the doubters once and for all. Yeah, and this guy is fun to watch. He brings the action. I, you know, I was very sad to hear that he had to go through all that, but I'm very happy to see that they immediately rebooked these guys to come in here. Um, shame he didn't get to fight Texas, but he gets to fight here at the Apex in front of us. And this guy's boxing is on point, extremely fast, extremely powerful. He's extremely aggressive. This fight has the makings for sure to be fighting a night between these two. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for this lightweight fixture. Lots of differences to consider. Four years separates the fighters. Garcia taller at six foot. Can also outreach Costa by a useful four inches. To introduce the fighters, here's Joe Martinez. In our five hands, we are set to go with the next five, three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist standing five feet, 10 inches tall. Weighing it officially 155 and one half pounds. His record stands at 20 victories with six defeats. Fighting out of Bauru, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Here is Melchizael Melkabe Costa. And across the octagon, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. A freestyle fighter standing six feet even. He weighed in 155 pounds and in 19 fights, holds a record of 14 victories with five defeats. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, he is the meat machine, Steve Garcia. And your referee in charge of the action is Chris Tognoni. Chris Tognoni shares the octagon with the two fighters. Thank you very much, Red. Round one ahead, maximum three fives. Melky Zael, Melky Costa against Steve Garcia. Two featherweights fighting up at lightweight because this has been delayed by a week. They touch him up, two lefties as well. Costa identifying that, he's not used to that kind of pairing. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah, that changes a lot in terms of the use of the jab, low kick. And it, it, most southpaws are not used to facing other southpaws, but especially one's not as aggressive as Steve Garcia, but Melky already on the back here, Paul. Yeah, wow. smart move. He knew, he knew that facing somebody like Garcia comes out very aggressive with big, powerful punches. You gotta watch out for him. And one way to do that is to dip underneath and try to take that back and then start well, to just wear on him a bit. Slow the fight down, especially as the kicker. We haven't necessarily seen a ton of Melky's ground game. And, you know, it's hard to have your UFC Don't debut against kick, Thiago Moises and, ha and really be, have it be a showcase for your ground game. But he does have six wins by submission, uh, quite a few of them rear naked chokes. So you, you know he has an awareness of, of how to handle the back. And uh, that spot for Garcia right now. Garcia has really been through the mill over the last couple of weeks with sickness, hence the delay in this contest. Patched himself back up to get out here and fight, earn a paycheck, keep marching forward as well. He's won back-to-back -back fights. Absolute banger against Shailen Nordambeka. Got dropped, oh, eight uh, elbows, but then the body work. Body work from both of these fighters, actually. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what they bring. If only they'd separate. I don't mind it. I like Balance. I like the grappling. Melky doing a really nice job of keeping the legs occupied of Steve Garcia. Steve so far not really able to address the grip, and Melky's you know sort of transitioning from side to side, not settling in one spot, which is giving Steve Garcia a hard time figuring out how to defend as he moves. Yeah, because you go to fight those hands, right? You try to pick a hip. I'm gonna push exactly and hip into it. And well, you can't pushing. do that if you keep going side to side. Don't grab the cage. Good awareness here from Garcia. You would expect him to be, of course, well-versed in his positions, a product of the Jackson Wink Gym. 
Costa foraging for openings to try and accelerate through these positions. Sorry, John. Sorry, but it, it, the fact that he was so sick, right, that's something to keep in mind to see how did that affect him. Even yeah. though you're recovered, I mean, we all know how it is. Oh you're vomiting, gosh. you're feeling ill for a while, even if you're fully hydrated and healthy again, at, at what cost? So we'll see how, so far, I mean, he's handling himself well here, but we're still in the first round, and Costa just not giving him any space. No, he's like Velcro on the back of uh, Garcia right now. Really, oh, nice hip bump there. That was beautiful. Didn't quite get it to the canvas, but he's doing so many tricky things right now that's frustrating Steve Garcia. That's nice. A little high on the back there and kind of lost the position, but a good thought with the, the bump and the lift. But Garcia, like you said earlier, John, his defense is on point so far. Tried that Kimura grip, so Costa abandoned. Might still be searching for it to try and neutralize. What is it? What does it do, Laura, in this position when he's searching for that figure four? Well, what, you know, when he when you get the Kimura grip, it really can allow you to peel out of these of these situations because although you're not necessarily looking for the submission itself, it puts enough pressure on the shoulder of your opponent where you can get into a better spot and and break from these these positions here, or you could roll in and actually look for a Kimura on the ground depending on. What your, uh, what your aim is. Yeah, and it's interesting, right? Because when you're watching both guys kind of in this stalemate position where one is defending, one is being very offensive, it's something to note on who's using more energy at the moment. And right now, Garcia really just fighting the hands, kind of leaning up against the fence while Melkin Dial Costa is constantly throwing these strikes, moving side to side. So we'll see who's taxed more from this because these lifts, in my opinion, yeah. it, it, at least for me, if I was in there, the one, if I was in Costa's position, it's much more fatiguing for me to be trying to do, you know, yeah. uh, mat returns over and over again, shifting side to side, trying to get my hooks in. Whereas Costa, uh, excuse me, Garcia is able to lean up against the fence. Now, granted, it's exhausting. You're constantly worried about the pressure, but I think this is gonna be more of a cost on Melchizedek Costa, who's never been able to really secure a position yet. Now, that doesn't mean Garcia's winning in any of these exchanges. So Costa frequently looking for those body lock takedowns. Garcia's posture making it really tricky for him. I was just gonna say, if he could look for some sort of a valley drop where, where he would pull him back rather than looking to you know peel a leg up, because Garcia is so good so far at, at defending these individual leg attacks. If he could pull him back, that might, he might have more success. Garcia, the immovable object right now. And that's the end of the first round of points. The holidays on Dale's farm weren't very festive until he saved big on a Bluetooth feature with Amazon's last minute deal. And now, Mamacita. Ooh. Está that llama is part dancer, part prancer. Shop last minute deals now at Amazon. Be the first to know about new products and sign up to receive 10% off your first online order. Scan the QR code now to save. Terms and exclusions do apply. Shop the widest selection of UFC gear only at ufcscore.com. Nice opening leg kick from Steve Garcia going searching with the right as well. Melty's corner was asking for kicks, but he's got a nice single leg. Oh, beautiful reversal from Garcia. Oh, and he eats a knee. Oh, wow. oh he's hurt. He's dropped him down. Garcia bringing the heat early in round oh, number two. He's going after it. Melky's got to find a way to keep his head underneath Garcia and save wow. spot. Wow, look at the intensity and ferocity of Garcia. Who's bleeding? Is it? Cut through the elbow. Costa's Costa's bleeding bad open. right now. Man, I can't believe he survived that, to be completely honest with you. Good job for the ref to let him fight through that, but he's, he's in trouble here. Garcia is oh, pounding man. his way to victory here, surely. Oh, still fighting. Big shots from Garcia, but he's under the chin on this. This is going to be tight. 
Short choke attempt from Garcia. Wow. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, that, that is enough for the referee. Steve Garcia gets it done. Let's go! He is never in a boring fight. Tell what a victory now. that was. Oh, Tell me now. Get down. Yeah, he's now. wrestling the ref. They only won. had to hit the switch there to... <laughs> it's a good sign the fight's over if you start going for a single leg on the ref. And just props to Garcia on coming back from illness oh, a week ago. You know, being pulled from the fight. Unreal stuff. That was good, Vince. All right, let's take a look at this finish here. Garcia, he lands this knee on transition and then senses the finish, follows it up, follows Melky to the ground. But this ground and pound was unbelievable. Gets very, very close to the rear naked choke here. I think the blood was what allowed Melky to sort of find a little bit of an angle. Garcia wise to it, knowing he wasn't going to be able to finish it. But the sound of those elbows, John, the sound of those elbows was absolutely nasty. The referee had seen enough and... Uh, yeah, as you can see, Melky's still very much unaware of what's happened, and uh, some nice, some nice counter wrestling by Mr. Rooney there. Yeah, good, uh, heavy hit. Yeah. So we obviously hope that uh, Stop Costa Five, four, recovers quickly. But let's give Garcia his moment. Here's Joe Martinez. Oh, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes officially one minute, one second, round number two. Referee Chris Cognoni puts a halt to the fight. Your winner by TKO, the Meat Machine. Steve Garcia! I'm here with Steve Garcia. Steve, congratulations on a beautiful performance. Now, you came out round one, frustration, right? He's trying to get you down on your back. You defend it well. What was going through your mind there between rounds before you went out for the second round? Uh, before I answer this question, man, I just want to say I got to give God all the praise and glory. Man, he's my leader, and I just follow him everywhere we go. <laughs> I take it in my own hands. It never works out the way I want it to. So 